Good day everyone! My name is Gretchen Cabras. Our group is tasked to report about the semantics of mother tongue. So let's begin! But first, we will identify what is semantics. Semantics involves the deconstruction of words, signals, and sentence structures. It influences our reading comprehension as well as our comprehension of other people's words in everyday conversation. In other words, Semantics is the study of meaning. By creating a common understanding of the meaning of things, semantics can help us better understand each other. For example, let's say you have a dog and I have a dog. Our original image of what the dog might look like may be different, but we can use a language to help us come to a common understanding of what that dog is. And it can help different people understand each other despite of different experiences or points of view. Since meaning in language is so complex, there are actually different theories used within semantics. And now my group mates will explain those theories of semantics. Good day everyone. So we already talked, discussed about what is semantics. Today we will know the three theories of semantics. First is a formal semantics. Uses techniques from math, philosophy, and logic to analyze the broader relationship between language and reality truth and possibility. So why we use a formal semantics? So this is a discipline that employs the techniques from symbolic logic, mathematics, and mathematical logic in order to produce precisely um, the meaning of a natural language. For example, of a natural language with regards of a formal semantics is the English. So formal semantics is about the meaning of syntactically complex expression. Literally means using formal methods for the study of meaning. So nowadays, oh, there is also have a formal lexical semantics and discourse semantics, but the identification is a formal semantics and the formal meaning of semantics. So what is the purpose of uh, formal semantics? Is to severe the descriptions specifically of the mathematics and to precise the deep understanding of essence of language. That could be all. Thank you. Good day everyone, I am Justine M. Kabungkab from BED 3A and my task is to discuss the lexical semantics. So what is lexical semantics? Lexical semantics are the branch of semantics that studies the meaning and relationship of words. It also includes the study of how, word, how words constructed their meaning, how they act in grammar, and the relationship between the distinct senses and uses of words. There are also two aims under the lexical semantics. These are to represent the meaning of each word in the language, and the second one is to show how the meaning of each words in a language are interrelated. So those are the two aims, and under the lexical semantics, there are lexical relations so lexical relations are words that are semant semantically related to each other in different ways the terms that are used to describe this relation often end with a suffix name so there are six lexical relations these are the antonyms synonymy hyponymy, prototypes, homophony, and homonymy. So, let us first discuss the first lexical relations. This is the antonyms. 
Antonyms are words that are different or opposite in meaning. Like for example, the word happy in its antonym is sad. The second word is fast and slow. The third is down and up. So according to Kedler 1998, there are four types of antonyms. These are the binary antonyms, gradable antonyms or opposites, morphologically related opposites, and the last one is a convert, converse antonyms. What is binary antonyms? Binary antonyms are opposites that both cannot be obtained together. Like for example, the on and off, dead and alive, asleep and awake. The second type of antonym is the gradable antonyms or opposite. These are the antonyms or opposites that are measurable adjectives. Like for example, the tall and short, long and short, high and low, hot and cold, then big and small. The third type is the morphologically related opposites. These are formed by the addition, the addition of negative prefixes like an, in, ear, and im to the original words. Like for example, the word friendly. And the opposite of that is the unfriendly. The second word is married and its opposite is unmarried. And the fourth and last type of antonyms is the converse antonyms. It is a relation between two entities from alternative viewpoints. Like for example, above and below. The second word is employer and employee. Now let's go to the second lexical relation. This is the synonymy. Synonymy are words that are, that are sameness of meaning or the same in meaning. This can be noun adjectives, adverbs, or verbs. Like for example, the term or the word big and its synonym is huge. The second word is happy, then glad, warm, and hot. And according to Cruz 2000, there are three types of synonym. These are the absolute synonym, proposition synonym, and the last one is a near synonym. So what is absolute synonymy? It is the items which are equiformal in all contexts. Like for example, the word sofa and its syn synonym is site. And the second word is a pullover and its synonym is sweeter. And the second type of synonym is the propositional synonym. It is a special lexemes. They are, however, no absolute synonym. Like for example, the word Fidel and its synonym is violin. The second word is bachelor and its synonym is unmarried. The last type of synonym is the near synonymy. It is expressions that appear similar but are not really identical in meaning. Like for example, the word miss and its synonym is fog and the second is Second word is stream and its synonym is brook. So those are the types, three types of synonym. And now let's go to the third lexical relation which is, which is the hyponymy. Hyponymy are symptomatic relations of being superordinate or belonging to a higher rank or class. So example animal arrow lion goat and dog so the explanation for this is the hyponymy 
is a relation of inclusion. For instance, the meaning of word or term animal is included in the meaning of lion, goat, goat and dog. In conclusion, the term animal is the upper term known as superordinate, while the lower terms like lion, goat, and dog are called hyponym. Another example, color, pink, red, and blue. In its conclusion is the term color is the upper term known as superordinate, while the lower term pink, red, and blue are called hyponym. So that's all for my report and the uh, and the other lexical relation will be reported by the next reporter. Thank you. Hello everyone. This is the continuation of Miss Justine's report. The types of lexical semantics. There are six types of lexical semantics and this is the continuation. The four types of lexical semantics is synonymy. Synonymy is a, two words, two or more words whose meaning are close related and the same. In this type, the words of this type is closely related and the same meaning. Example, big and huge. As you can see, the big and huge is the same meaning. And for the fifth, types of lexical semantic is antonymy. Antonymy exists in which I uh, exist in words which are opposite in meaning. Opposite meaning. For the for this um, types is the example for these types is um, boy and girl. See, uh, they are diff uh, they are opposite meaning. Another example is hmm, good and bad. Good and bad is opposite meaning. And for the last types of uh, lexical semantics is hyponymy. Hyponymy, a word or phrase whose semantic is more specific. In this type, uh, in this type is more specific. The example for this type is rose. Rose is a flower. See, it's, it, uh, it's very specific. Another example is cow. Cow is animals. Another example is Jane. Jane is a girl, right? So, that's all for today. God bless and thank you. Good day, everyone. By the way, my name is Jovelyn Imangadan, and I'm going to discuss the one of the types of semantics, which is conceptual semantics. Conceptual semantics is deals with the most basic and form of a word before our thoughts and feelings added context to it. So when we say conceptual semantics, ito yung pinag-uusapan ang pangunahing konsepto. Means the we talks about the general, the abstract ideas about the meaning of each word. So also, conceptual semantics is studies of the cognitive na bibigay malay, cognitive structure of meaning. So that is the conceptual semantics. So let's say for example, the word cougar. So if we heard if we heard the word cougar, it comes on our mind that the word cougar means a wild cat. Isang malaking ligaw na pusa. But the word cougar has another another definition. Cougar is indicates an old woman na nagtipag-date sa isang mas batang lalaki. So, the word cougar has a different definition. So, so for us, we must be so we must understand understand carefully the meaning of cougar or cougar as we apply this in any particular statement. Another example of the word needle. So when we hear the word needle, it comes in an image our thoughts in order for us to, uh, to understand what is the meaning of needle. So since we talk about conceptual semantics, 
So needle it conceptually semantics that refers a clear and logical meaning. So therefore, needle is a very fine cylinder of a piece of metal with an at the end of point and have a hole or the eye of a tree. And needle is using for sewing. So as you observe, the, the examples that I given to you is more on description that gives an idea about the meaning of each word. So the conceptual semantics also is described, can be described as descriptive, naglalarawan. Dinonative, I will explain this later, later and the cognitive, nagbibigay malay. And also, the conceptual semantics opens the door of conversation with denotation and connotation. When we say denotation, it is a um, letter. So, denotation is same as denotative. So, when we say denotation, it means a literal definition of a word. A standard meaning of a word. Kumbaga, it provides a fact, an exact word, the exact meaning of the word. Whereas, the connotation is indirect siya or implied a uh, meaning and feelings which it evoke emotion by the use of a word. Kung baga, dito sa connotation, dito ginagamit yung mga figurative figurative meaning, yung mga matalinhagang mga salita, matalinhagang mga kahuluban. Ginagamit dito yung mga salita na may matalinhagang kahulugan, malalim na kahulugan. To sum up, the concept of semantics is a framework of semantic analysis that developed by Ray Jokendorf in 1976. And also, I will introduce you that the, the purpose of concept of semantics is to provide us magbigay ng paglalarawan sa isang paglalarawan para maintindihan ng mga tao kung anong ibig sabihin ng salitang yun. Para, therefore, we, the people, will have an explanation or clear or specific explanation. That could be all. Thank you.